Hey everybody, it's Dave with DII. We're here with our handpan live show. We've got some excellent guests. We're going to be talking with Adam Ethereal today and Heathrow Schroeder. And uh, it's going to be really fun. We're going to be talking about emotional healing with uh, the handpan with Adam and all of that kind of subject. And a lot more, by the way. He's got some great stories. Uh, he's got 1.5 million TikTok followers. And so he's got this really enormous uh, group of people that enjoy what he does online. So we're going to talk a little bit that, about that as well. Uh, by the way, if you haven't been to our live show before, go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button over here underneath the screen, the red subscribe. It would be great to have you as a subscriber. Also, if you haven't been to our website, our website is davesislandinstruments.com. It would be great for you to go there. At the very bottom of the home screen, there's a newsletter. You guys can click on the little newsletter uh, icon or whatever it is, a little button, and uh, sign up for our email newsletter. And we send out announcements from time to time about different things that we're doing, just like this live show today. Uh, also, we've got this new platform called the DII Community. It's an online lessons platform for handpan. And uh, we are putting more and more videos up right now uh, as we speak uh, on the subject of how to learn and to play the handpan. Uh, we have uh, sections on how to, all the basic things about getting started on a handpan. Uh, and it moves on to all sorts of different subject areas with the handpans as well. Specific to the models that we make, by the way. Uh, we make three different models of handpans here at DIR. We make the RS stainless steel that you see in front of me. We make the Clarity, the uh, clear one here that's shiny, and the Luna Clarity, and we also make the Luna Satin. So we've got three models of hand pans. Uh, they're all tuned to D minor. We call it the D minor sunset scale. Uh, some people call it the Celtic minor scale out there in hand pan world. Uh, but that's just a little bit about us. Um, uh, with no further ado, I want to bring on Adam. Wait, no, no, hold on, hold on. The story, <laughs> I've got a great story. This is today's story. We've got to get it in the right order here. Hold on. Okay. So the great story is, I didn't even know who Adam was uh, until uh, I got a call from uh, a high school friend named Cass. And you might have seen uh, some of the story on a previous live session. Uh, her son is named Heathrow, and she said that Heathrow uh, was really into handpan, and would it be possible for him uh, somehow to acquire one? I'm not sure how the question went. <laughs> but anyway, I said to myself, you know, I think I've got an extra one in my, in my shed. It's kind of rusty or whatever. It's old, something I made years ago. And so I was like, sure, I'll dr drop it off to him. And so I met him at his house, and I showed him how to play it a little bit. And he was a complete beginner. And uh, he's 12 years old, by the way. And, and so we did a whole uh, video on him. And then we had a little live show. And then I asked him, well, let's, let's ask him. We're going to bring on Heathrow now. We're going to ask him some questions. So let's get this, this story started here. So Heathrow, how are you? Good. Good to see you. I'm so happy you're back. Me too. Yeah, no, this is really fun. I'm really, thank you again, by the way, and your mom for doing all this and, and getting involved with our videos and uh, being here with us. So this is really great for me too. So thank you so much. Um, so tell me real quickly, I, I came to your house and I showed you some stuff about the hand pans. And then I asked you, how did you become familiar with hand pans? Because you're 12 years old. It seems like something that 12 year olds don't really get involved with. And you said... I found a guy on TikTok. That's right. That's exactly what he said. I found a guy on TikTok. And I said, that's interesting. And so as the day went on, uh, we were talking and playing hand pan a little bit. And then before I left, I said, oh, by the way, could you just show me who this person is on TikTok? And so uh, who was it then, uh, Heathrow? Ethereal. Ethereal in E is his TikTok name, right? Ethereal dot in dot E, I believe. And uh, so I was like, okay, and I note to self, right? And so I went home later that night and I decided to look up uh, Ethereal in E and send Ethereal in E a message. I didn't even know what his name was. So I, and I realized at the time, because at the time he had like 950,000 followers or whatever, and I, I thought the, the odds that I would actually get through to this person were very low. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, he, he messaged back and it was really cool. Um, so we had a nice little conversation on messages. And uh, so here we are. Um, Heathrow, so tell me from your perspective, like getting started with handpan, just before we start talking with Adam here, uh, did you enjoy the process of learning? How, did you get some help online by watching his videos? How did you kind of get started with your, with your own journey? I got started by watching his videos and then I started watching your videos and then. Okay. I learned how to calm down and then start playing. 
Nice. Okay. So the word calm down, like, so it, it helps you relax kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. You know, a lot of people that are involved with handpans use the handpan for that specific reason. It's kind of interesting you say that because we're going to be talking about emotional healing later. And that's kind of part of what we're going to be talking about, the relaxation and the calming aspect of the handpan. All right. So I want to bring on Adam now. Adam, are you there? I am here. Hey, there he is. Everybody, welcome Adam. Adam Ethereal. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Adam. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute joy getting to know you. Really, seriously, you and I have only talked uh, verbally, what, for two days? For probably less than an hour total. <laughs> yes, yep. Well, like I said, we message each other a little bit, but uh, verbally, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we're still getting to know each other. So it's going to be fun talking with you a little bit more to get to know you today. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, you met uh, Heathrow a little bit uh, during our little uh, green room session when we were getting set up uh, here for the video. Uh, do you have anything to ask Heathrow? Or Heathrow, do you have anything to ask Adam, like, really quick? Um, what's your favorite handpan? Oh, that's a good one. What's my favorite handpan? Um, I will show you. It is this one right here. Um, this one is an E major scale. Let me play the whole scale for you. So um, I'm called Ethereal and E because my first hand pen was tuned to E minor. And I wanted a stage name that started with the letter E. Ah. So I looked through the dictionary at the letter E until I came across the word ethereal. Ethereal in the dictionary with its definition said heavenly sounding. And I knew that that was the word for my stage name. So I decided ethereal and E. And I just came to this realization just like a day or two ago that my first instrument was E minor. And then I got this one later on, an E major. And I thought it was funny that in the past I always said ethereal and E, but I was playing an E minor. And then I finally got the E major scale, and I just realized to myself, oh, this is the one I play all the time. And there you go. It finally worked out. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. So, yeah, this, is, this one is the one that I play the most, probably. That's cool. Yeah. How about, uh, Adam, do you have any questions for Heathrow? Yeah. So, let's see. So, I asked Heathrow, you know, here's another question I haven't asked Heathrow yet. Um, Heathrow, what is the first video you ever saw of me or was it a live video that you first saw of me it was a video a long time ago and it was a joke about bacon <laughs> yeah okay so that was the first one right on yeah i think i think the uh the video i was saying something like uh life is short uh eat bacon die happy right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So on TikTok, uh, content isn't always about music. There right. is other things that go into my content too, huh? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, so then, he... and then, what did you say was? Do you have a favorite song that I play? Aqua Rainbow. Aqua Rainbow. Why is why is that your favorite song of mine? It's just the flow I like a lot and uh, lyrics. Hey, and you uh, sing, Adam, sing with me when I sing too. I sing with you on live streams. Yeah. Good. Good for you. That's so awesome, dude. Hey, hey, Adam. I'm so glad you're there. Yeah. Could you could you play a little bit of that for us so the audience can check that out? Absolutely, absolutely. Here we go. I I won't ask for Heathrow to sing with me if he doesn't want right. to. Right. <laughs> okay. If, Heathrow, if you want to sing with me, you're more than welcome to. Okay. Ready? Here we go. So the story behind the song is that I was doing a live video on Facebook. And I came up with this rhythm while I was sitting next to a river doing this live video. And anytime I come up with a new rhythm that turns into a new song while I'm doing a live video, I like to ask my audience if they help me name it and if they help me put some lyrics to it as well. I like to do that because it becomes less of my song 
have more of our song. Yeah. Somebody said something about aqua. Somebody said something about rainbow. I said, hey, how about we put the two together? Let's call it aqua rainbow. Why not? The silly, goofy name stuck. And ever since, the meaning to the song is to be unashamedly you. Proud of your authentic self. And this is the most important part. To never, ever let anyone steal your joy. This is Aqua Rainbow. Sing with me, I love that. Here we go. My rainbow, my rainbow, my rainbow, aqua rainbow. My aqua rainbow, my aqua rainbow, my aqua rainbow. My rainbow, my rainbow, my rainbow, aqua rainbow. My aqua rainbow, my aqua rainbow, my aqua rainbow, ah, 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 ah. Hit that high note, ah. ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I heard you sing with me. Yes, thank you. That was great. That was great. There you go. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Well, you definitely have a uh, your your thing on TikTok. I was looking at your TikTok videos, and frequently you're doing like comparisons. Like, do you like this? Do you like that? And the videos are super short, 15 seconds, 30 seconds long, whatever they are. Uh, but they're very effective. So you've done an amazing job, Adam, of like uh, reaching people like Heathrow and bringing the joy of the handpan into the handpan world, to the world of handpan. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate the uh, affirmation and validation. Absolutely. And, uh, I, as you have said previously, um, as you grow your audience and you get larger and more exposure, sadly you get a lot of negative that comes with it too. Of course. So. It really means a lot to me to hear uh, some positive from the handpan community. So that's, thank that's you, Dave. Great. Pre- yeah, that's yeah. great. Hey, Heathrow, we're gonna I'm gonna talk with Adam now about the emotional healing part of uh, his journey with the handpan. So we're gonna come back to you a little bit later, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, Heathrow. Bye. Awesome, Adam. You're brilliant. Thank you so much for doing this again. I, I'm really overjoyed. I can't tell you how much fun I'm having with this interview. You're, you're this is great. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise, yeah. me too. Um, so you were talking about the emotional healing with hand pan. A lot of people are tuning in today. Oh, by the way, all the people out there that are watching, if you have any comments or questions, especially questions for us today, uh, we love answering questions live during our little hand pan sessions here. Uh, it could be a question about like how he plays the hand pan, how he got started with the hand pan, how he writes songs, fun stuff like that. Um, is always really helpful, uh, not only for us to answer you, but there, there's other people that are watching that have questions as well. And so sometimes these questions, uh, we can answer them and other people get educated as well. So uh, that's what I really like doing with this show. It's an educational show. And uh, so anyway, so if you guys want to throw any uh, comments or questions at us, please feel free and we will uh, answer them the best we can. Quick shout outs. Oh, here's a shout out. Here's a shout Quick out. shout outs to Robin. She had a comment. She's She's down in Culver City. She wants to come in, Dave. Okay. Check out a 20 inch Luna handpan. Awesome. Have her handpan tune. Diva and Del Mar. She's always with us every week. Hi, Diva. And Athena Stamos. Uh, she's looking forward to the interview. So, those are some people that said hi. Awesome. Thanks so much for those comments, everybody. All right, so uh, first of all, before we get into the whole emotional healing, uh, super duper subject matter, uh, can you just give us a quick uh, history of yourself, how you got started with music, so people kind of get a bigger picture of who you are and, and why we're talking with you today? Sure. Um, so, I like to uh, play the hand yeah. band while I talk. Awesome. Okay. It helps, it helps uh, relax me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, a little history on me. Um, I was that kid that was always tapping on something growing up. And I had some very difficult things that I went through as a child. Uh, number one, my father committed suicide when I was only 11 years old. Anyways, my mother saw that tapping energy in me and saw the potential in it. And she wanted to help me cope with all the 
difficult things I was going through in my life. So she bought me a drum set, put me in drum lessons. I learned how to play the drum set and I learned how to cope with my anxiety, my grief. And I loved sitting on that drum set and just closing my eyes and just getting lost in the rhythm, forgetting about everything else that was going on. Yeah. Anyways, um, I was in a garage band. I dreamed of being a rock star. Of course, that dream kind of died when I became an adult, had to get a job, went to college, got married, had a baby. But uh, after I got divorced not long after that, uh, my world kind of came crashing down. I just was trying to find a way to survive, cope with life, you know? Mm -hmm. And I decided I want to get back into music, get lost in the rhythm again. So uh, I got a drum set, started playing drums again. I uh, went to open mic nights, met a guy who hired me as a drummer in a professional band. Uh, my dream of becoming a rock star was coming true. And I was getting paid to do something I loved, yeah. which was amazing. But then I got replaced. Another drummer took my spot in the band <laughs> and my heart broke. Yeah. And so I was poor at the time in between jobs sat down at a donation bed to donate my plasma for cash. Mm -hmm. While I was laying there in that bed, I was flipping through percussion related YouTube videos. I came across a video of Daniel Waples playing a hand band in a London subway. And my first thought was, wow, that's amazing. My second thought was, I can do that. My third thought was, that's my ticket into professional music. Three years later, I got myself a hand band and that was the start of my handband journey, and I just dove right in. I created a Facebook page, started doing street performance, took the money I made from my street performance the first summer, and recorded my first album, and uh, recorded another couple albums after that. And I had a major breakdown at work and decided that I wasn't going to get another job, but I was going to pursue my dream of being a professional handband player yeah. instead. And it was really dicey and really hard at first. Um, but this past year, it has been paying off so much. And uh, I am living my dream and loving life as a result. Wow. So there you go. There's some of my history. Of that. Yeah, <laughs> That's right on. Wow, it's an amazing story. Yeah, you've got a lot to say there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... Uh, what kind of like when you play handpan like just taking in in uh taking knowing what you, i just heard from you uh when it came to the handpan what was different about the handpan for you with emotional healing versus like playing piano or guitar or something what what is it about the handpan that, that draws you to it well um like i said before i knew that i wanted oh, to be can hear you. oh can you hear me can you hello hear? i can oh i think i ran out of battery Testing, testing. That's right. He can hear you. He can just you, ran out of battery. Yeah, oh. I'll be right back. Okay. Hold on. Technical difficulty. Go, so, keep on going. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So um, what drew me to the handpan um, was that I, like I said, I was a drummer, percussionist before. And I, in order for me to be a professional, I had to be teamed up with someone. I couldn't ever just be a soloist. And when I discovered the handband and saw that I could perform on my own and not have to have someone with me to accompany me or me accompany them, I uh, I knew that that was, that was my instrument right there. And the fact that it has notes on it and it's tuned to a pentatonic scale and I can create music independently songs independently on my own without anyone having to help me i that was my ticket into being a, a professional musician on my own as a soloist so uh yeah i don't know that's 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 what drew me to the handpan wonderful yeah yeah handpan is just absolutely amazing the way it just kind of just has this way and i'll tell you my story real quick so this is my story and how it it uh affects me so uh, i I tuned steel drums before I tuned handpans. 
So steel drums, you play them with mallets, and they're, they st stand on a, or they're on a stand, floating on a stand, right? And so it's kind of like playing a drum set, like with drum, uh, drum sticks and that sort of thing. And so when I was making steel drums, uh, people would say, hey, you can, have you ever considered making a hand pan? And I was like, ah, I never really thought about it too much. And then finally somebody said, you know, hey, just make one and see if you can make one. I said, okay, so I made one. And when I put it in my lap and I actually played it for the first time, I, all of a sudden the aha moment like struck me and I was like, oh, I get it now. It's very personal. It's, it's something that you can hold against your body and you can feel it. It's almost like a child, you're holding a child or something. And then when you play it, it vibrates. So you can feel it vibrating and it, and it just, uh, it soothes your soul in kind of a different way than an instrument when it's away from you, right? I don't know if it, that's a similar experience for you at all. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I oftentimes when I play the hand pan, I, my mind just drifts away to some other location and I'm just gone. This out of body experience, you know? Yeah. Hey, uh, what, what scales do you like us? Let's say you're in like a real, like you're real bummed out or you had a bad day or whatever. And normally on your TikTok videos, you're all happy, right? So behind the scenes, when you're uh, maybe not feeling so good, do you have a specific hand pan or a specific melody or a specific thing that you play that uh, affects you best to, to kind of bring you out of a funk at all? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I don't know if I'm able to talk about the tongue job. <laughs> go for all. it. Yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, it's all good. Um, this is this is there right here. Um, you know, I have, I was talking to Heathrow earlier about one of my songs, um, probably one of my most popular songs on the tongue drum here, is that uh, it's, it's, do you mind if I, if I share? And, Go for uh, it. Yeah, uh, no, great. Okay. So this song here, um, I, uh, this song's about my experience. Singing in church as a kid. So, in, as, a, as a kid in church, I was that kid that was belting his lungs out. Nice. <laughs> Completely oblivious to what anyone thought of my singing voice. Right. <laughs> because it didn't matter what anyone thought of my singing voice, because I wasn't singing for them. Yeah. I wasn't singing to sound good at all. Yeah. I was singing because it made me feel good. Yeah. It made me feel happy. I grew up and I stopped going to church. I stopped singing too. Until about a year ago, I was flipping through videos on Facebook. I came across this video of a guy named Chris Duckett over in the UK. He was playing a handbag and he was singing too. Chris sang with such passion, such conviction, yeah. that it ignited this fire inside of me. I wanted it woke up that inner child who loved to sing. And I wanted to be just like Chris. I wanted to sing with my music too. Yeah. But I didn't. I let my fear of rejection stop me. About six months later, I was doing a live video on Facebook, playing some music for my followers there. And it was almost if like I could hear words being sung to my music. Nice. I felt compelled to sing those words, but I was scared. I was scared that if I was to start singing, all the people that were watching would hear my horrible singing voice and they would leave and never come back. Yeah. So I closed my eyes. I pretended as if no one was watching. I got in touch with that inner child who loved to sing, who told me, Adam, you love to sing it. Don't you dare let anyone and their negative perception of you stop you from doing what you love. So I sang. I haven't stopped singing since. Now, I'm not a singer. I will never claim to be a singer. I'll probably never feel comfortable singing in front of people. But if I know that people are singing with me, that makes me feel a little more comfortable, a little less alone. Yeah. Anyways, I would love it if you sang with me. You don't have to, but this song here is called I Sing For Me. Here we go. Ready? For me, not you. For me, I sing for me, from my heart, from my heart, from my heart, I sing for me, for me, not you, for me, I sing for me, from my heart, from my heart, from my heart, I sing for me, 
for me, not you. For me, I sing for me. From my heart, from my heart, from my heart, I sing. Well, that's not for me, not yeah. you. For me, I sing for me. From my heart, from my heart, from my heart, I sing for me. I sing for me. I sing for me. I sing for me. So, to answer your question, uh, on that, you, you ask if what brightens my day, what helps me feel better. That song, um, you know, as I've grown with my audience, um, sadly, I also not only get exposed to really awesome positive things, but I also get exposed to really awful negative things too. Oh, sure. people, yeah. people that don't wish me the best. Yeah. And uh, anyways, this, this song here, I love singing this song whenever I have, I feel down about something like that because I just remind myself and I say, you know what? I'm not here for those people. Yeah. I'm not here for anyone else. I'm here because playing this music, singing these songs, it helps me cope with the difficulties in my life. It helps me feel better. It helps me find purpose and meaning and joy. And if people don't like that for some reason, that's their problem. Yeah. And yeah. I don't need to worry about their opinion. So anyways, that, that's my song that helps me. Well, you know, that song is perfect because uh, you're basically talking about your voice that way uh, with that song. You're talking about my singing is OK and it's for me. It's not for you. Right. So a lot of people right. that buy the hand pans, they have uh, questions they frequently are asking, like, how do I come up with ideas to play? And as I'm watching you play, it seems like you kind of effortlessly just uh, float over the hand pan and just kind of effortlessly come up with ideas. Uh, when you were like first beginning, uh, did, did it take you a while to warm up to like that effortless style of playing or since you had some drumming technique in your history, was it kind of an easy transition or how did you navigate that? You know, I, the very beginning, <laughs> it's actually really funny. I'm glad you asked. Uh, I remember when I got my first hand pan, um, it came, it came and actually I wasn't home at the time my neighbor signed for it and kept it at his house. Okay. I yeah. remember so excited. I ran over to my neighbor's house. I took that box. I came home. I opened it up and I put it in my lap and I, I did one of these. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> the classic. I was like, yeah. Wait, wait, why is it not making any sound? And right. I was like, I was like flabbergasted. I was like, yeah. here, I've been waiting three years for this thing. And I've spent a, a decent chunk of change of money on this. And I don't know how to play it. Yeah. <laughs> and, yep. And at that and at that point where I lived, there was no one in my area that had a hand pan or played the hand pan at all either. Yeah. So I didn't really have anybody to teach me. Um, and so when I first got it, yeah, I, I struggled with it and I didn't really know what I was doing. And but eventually, you know, I figured out that, you know, it's about that light touch, right? right. And once I figured out how to do that light touch mm -hmm. to make the metal resonate um after that then my next struggle was working on my non-dominant hand right yep my non-dominant hand you know i could totally play a rhythm and play just fine with my right hand but incorporating both hands right. and playing with my non-dominant hand also yeah that was a real struggle also okay yeah so i would say you know within the first couple months that was my my struggle figuring that out but after that, then, yeah, it did just kind of flow effortlessly. I, I tell people all the time when they ask me, you know, is the handpan hard to play? And I say, no, it's not. It's yeah. not. It's truly an instrument for everyone. I say, yeah. as long as you are able to tap on something, you can play the handpan. Yeah. And uh, I yeah. say, you know, the two most difficult things are learning how to tap it in just the right way to make it resonate, number one. And then number two is to incorporate your non-dominant hand. But after yeah. that, it's right. really simple. That would yeah. be my take on it. Yeah. And another thing I, I noticed what you're doing, a lot of your melodies kind of just follow the, the regular hand pan notes. So like if, if I play, it'd be something like, I love to play the hand pan. I love to play the hand pan, right? 
So a lot of your yeah. melodies just kind of follow along with the hand pan itself. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I, so for my reason for that is that I, I find for me, when I tra travel back to my childhood and when I was tapping on things, when I started playing the drums, well, percussion tapping in general for me has always been about getting lost in a rhythm. It's like a coping skill for me to forget about all the horrible things that are going on in my yeah, life yeah, yeah, yeah. and just lose myself. And so for me, playing the handpan, I want that experience as well. I don't want to have to think, okay, I got to play this here and play this here then, and then this, this, this. I don't want to think. I don't, I don't think when I play yeah. the handpan. It yeah. just happens. And yeah. my songs, the songs that I, I come up with, I don't ever actually intentionally ever sit down and say, I want to write a song right now. Right. <laughs> that, that doesn't yeah. ever happen. Yeah. It ever, it, it always happens spontaneously. Right. And that's what I love about it is that it just, I don't know, I guess it's an extension of me. It's not something that, you know, I have to read music for. It's, it's right. something that just a part of me. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I love, I, I love hearing you explain what you, how you do this stuff, man. It, you, you really have an authentic way of going about so many things and, and I just really f refreshing to hear. So many adults, I, I know that they get really stuck on technique. They think that there's a right way, there's a wrong way to play. And you kind of alluded to, yes, you can't play it like this because it just sounds wrong, right? So you do have to have some technique involved to get the sound of the instrument. But once you get that sound going, uh, what, what I, can't, I guess what I'm kind of hearing from you is just to let go and allow yourself the freedom to make a couple mistakes, but just see what comes out, right? Is that kind of what you're getting at? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of it is that it's, it's, it's a, the, <laughs> uh, can I share a, a, a funny uh, joke? <laughs> sure. Uh, this, is, this was a funny joke that I, I put on a TikTok video. Uh, that went viral that I yeah. thought was, that was, it's, it's actually, I used to be, so um, I got into, I said that my, my father committed suicide when I was 11. Yeah. Um, I think I chose to go into the field of psych psychology um, just because I was trying to figure out my own sure. child trauma, you know? Yeah. And anyways, I ended up, you know, needing to get a job after that. I got a master's in social work and decided to become a therapist. Okay. And so I was doing providing counseling services for people. And um, one of the jobs I worked at as a therapist, uh, I had this uh, supervisor that was this really old guy. He was probably in his 80s, and he was one of the funniest guys ever. And uh, he, But he was filled with just such nuggets of wisdom. And uh, he told me once, he said, life is like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you try and force it, <laughs> It'll just turn to shit. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Uh, and, and and that always stuck with me. And yeah. um, you know, I think it it applies to the hand pan as well, right? Because in life in general, you know, I think that the more that we try and make something happen, yeah, the worse the worse that it goes. Right. But the right. more that we just relax, yeah, and just live in the moment, the more beauty will come out of it yeah so. no absolutely <laughs> thanks so, for thanks for hearing my joke then. no i loved it that was great that was great <laughs> uh, i'm gonna remember that pretty much forever that, that one's yeah. gonna stick in my mind forever that's great uh so uh hey you know we've had all this crazy covid stuff going on and all these restrictions people hanging out at home all the time there's been a lot of, a lot of emotional ups and downs uh, for people in general uh you know, if, if, if somebody out there has a hand pan and they're, and they're feeling, or if they're even considering getting one or whatever, uh, do you think it would help? I mean, what, what's your, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out how to like bring this into the people that are out there watching. Like, uh, how do you think that hand pan would work with like the whole COVID situation? Do you think it's a helpful thing or what do you think? Absolutely. So um, just a little more on my history. Um, I got my start in professional music on a street corner. Um, just playing music for people that walked past that would have tipped me, tipped me occasionally. Yeah. Um, that really worked out well for me. Um, and it helped me to then work into saving up money to record an album, to pass out as a promotion, to start getting, uh, uh, live music gigs at weddings, restaurants, wherever, you know? Okay. Um, well I did that for a while 
And then um, that started to become my main thing. I quit my job, uh, decided to put all my eggs in one basket, become a musician. Um, well, then COVID hit and COVID um, changed everything. Um, I used to gig everywhere, you know, that would hire me. Yeah. And um, after COVID hit, I wasn't getting any phone calls. I wasn't getting any messages, uh, invitations to come perform anywhere. And um, I had to, I had to really figure things out because, you know, this is my, my main gig now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. holy, holy, holy moly, I, I better get going on this. So right. I, I thought to myself, okay, well, what can I do? And so I decided to start pouring myself into my online performances. Yeah. And um, so I think today, um, the live videos, people performing music live on social media is the new uh, street performing, is the new right. busking. I think you're right. And, yeah. Yeah. And so I just started to treat it as that. And wow, oh my gosh, the the world is, is changing. The world has changed already. Yeah. And there's an entire audience out there just waiting for people to come and speak to them in their home right there at this cell phone that's right in front of them. And, you know, um, it's definitely different than how things used to be. But I think that there's so much opportunity out there right now. Yeah. I mean, the fact that I have built an audience of a million and a half followers in five months on TikTok, <laughs> I think yeah. that that says something. That says right. something that there is a, a ripe audience out there just waiting for people to come and engage with them. Yeah. And uh, I think it's it's the people that that are not willing to accept that the world has changed and are waiting for things to go back to the way they used right. to be. Right. Those are the people that are getting left behind. Yeah. Those yeah, are the yeah. people that are really struggling. Yeah. But if you're willing to make a change, think differently, do something different. Yeah. There is opportunity for success abound out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I think that's great. That's a really good comment. I mean, uh, I, I I think I heard somewhere al along the lines like when you when you think about the future, it's kind of an anxious feeling. When you think about the past, it's kind of a depressing feeling. Sometimes those are the things that you get, the feelings you get from forward and backward. But if you live in the present, that's where you're most comfortable, uh, and that's like where you live the most uh, comfortable and creative life. Kind of like what you're talking about with creating your music, and also kind of like what you're talking about like right now, just with the, the status of things rather than looking back and trying to make it it's almost like trying to take something depressing and making it anxious <laughs> just live in live in the present and just accept it and then move ahead uh and just accepting it like that i don't know i think that might be kind of what you're talking about right there yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. well what is your favorite environment to play in like if you're <laughs> again back on the healing kind of topic like if you're feeling down or if you had some kind of uh, issue where you wanted to resolve it or whatever, do you go out and, and play as fast as you can in a certain environment or do you play slowly in another environment? Like how does that all work for you? Sure. So um, from the get-go of when I got my first handpan, I knew that this is exactly what I wanted to be doing. I knew that I wanted to be a professional handpan player. And so pretty much ever I was – playing my handpan, there was a cell phone uh, recording me on a live video that I was posting it to social media. Yeah. And so um, for me, my journey has always been documented. Right. And right. I don't, I don't play the handpan um, besides when I'm doing it on a live video professionally. Okay. Wow. And uh, so I've just, I guess I've gotten to the point where um, my, what you're seeing in that moment is very raw. It's really authentic yeah. because yeah. this is me. I, I, I usually, I, I perform on a live video now every day uh, for two to three hours. Yeah. And um, so in that two to three hours, um, I might come up with a new song, a new rhythm. Um, I might be experiencing some uh, anxiety. You know, I, I had getting some hate from, from people that don't wish me the best that are yeah. wanting to, to bring me down with negativity. Um, that comes out. Sometimes I cry. Um, a lot of my songs uh, are, have stories to them of like where I came up with them or what they're about, who they're attached to. I have a song I dedicate to my father that committed suicide when I was 11. I have a song yeah. 
that I dedicate to my grandmother who helped me ra help raise me uh, that passed away a few years back. And yeah. So, you know, I guess for me, um, playing the handpan is that emotion, is that coping with all those emotions. And then as far as an environment goes, um, for me, I love being out in nature. Right. That's the reason why I'm here in North Idaho is because I was seeking uh, natural beauty. I was seeking nature. I was seeking something that I could feel in awe with. Yeah. And um, I found it here. And um, it's interesting. My first two albums I recorded in a studio. Okay. And then I started to realize that, wait a second, I don't make my best music in a building. I make my best music out in the wilderness. So I told my sound engineer, I was like, hey, uh, let's go find a cool nature spot. Let's record out in nature. We went and on this back road for two hours in the middle of the wilderness, found this waterfall and yeah. uh, recorded it along this creek side downstream from the waterfall. And so, so anyways, yeah, I just, I love being out in nature and um, yeah, the hand pen just helps me get through it all. No, that's great. You know, it, I, I found it. I, I really enjoying being out in nature with the hand pen also like uh, Daniel and I will go out and do some of our little videos and stuff for our, for the, just the business, you know, like uh, promotional stuff. And we call them lifestyle videos because we love going out like to the ocean because we live close to the ocean and doing a hand pan shot there at the ocean. And I'll go up to the mountains and do one up in the mountains. And I, I'm finding that it's less about the promotion for me now. It's more about like I just love getting away to these environments and then playing for a little while and just enjoying the environment. It's really relaxing. And I think it's fascinating because... I'm not sure if I would be doing that if it wasn't for the hand pan. I don't know why. It feels like the ha the hand pan's kind of like a conduit for expressing myself or going and living my best life, you know? Yes. Uh, so it's really fascinating. And, and I think that lends itself to a lot of people. I think a lot of people feel about the hand pan in the exact same way. I've had customers come to me and say that they their life has been changed. You know, as soon as they got their hand pan there, their life has all changed and they start doing different things. And it's just absolutely amazing to me. I agree 100 yeah, percent. Yeah, this this instrument, it is electric. Yeah, it, it is. I think you, you said earlier about you feel the vibrations when you play it. I don't yeah. know if, you know, this sounds kind of hippy dippy, but, you know, I wonder, is is there something to that? Is there yeah. something to that, that that vibration becomes a part of your body? And then, you know, that vibration, you know, lowers your anxiety, lowers your stress, yeah. helps you let go of all yeah. the rest of it. And like you said, this has become my life too. My life has changed so much. Yeah, isn't that I, crazy? I, 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 don't, I didn't have a beard. I didn't have dreadlocks. I was yeah. clean shaven, buzz cut. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I just let go. It's like, yeah. you know what? I, this, I just, I don't, I want to just enjoy each and every moment. And. And for me, the hand pen does. It helps me. I, I go out and I do these live videos out in nature every day and play music, connect with people who appreciate my music. And I think to myself, oftentimes I think to myself, is this really happening? Am I, <laughs> yeah. am I, really, am I really living this best life right now? Yeah. Like, wow, how am I so lucky that yeah. this is happening? You know? Yep. No, that's great, man. Hey, uh, I was thinking maybe we could bring Heathrow back. What do you think? Yeah, that would be great. I would love that. Heathrow, are you available still? Are you still there? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> oh, there he is. Heathrow, awesome. So I had a really wonderful discussion with Adam. Uh, while you're here, at uh, Heathrow and Adam, I want to ask the audience, does anybody have any final questions or comments or anything out there? I think I saw Daniel uh, bringing something up. I think we had a couple shout-outs or something. Uh, Jimmy... Uh, says it's all about inner peace. There it is. Be you. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Athena just commented, sound healing for sure. Absolutely, yeah. And she also had another comment, which was, uh, here it is, truth, the present brings calm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, live your life in the present as much as you can, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, and those are the recent ones. Well, this was an absolutely awesome interview, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Do you guys have any further questions for each other? Heathrow, since you heard everything that uh, Adam just said, do you have any uh, additional questions or any comments? Um, 
Um, not really. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, Perfect. Well said. No problem at all. For Heathrow, though. We'll say, yeah, go ahead, Adam. So, um, Heathrow, how long have you been playing the handpan now? Uh, about, like, uh, two months or three months. That's awesome. And what can you tell me a little bit about your handpan and what it is? Um, it's a D minor and one of the keys is an A. Yep. Uh, what? How many notes are on it? Uh, eight, I think. Okay. And hey, so you are twelve years old. Yeah. So I just want to just let you know, you are one really, really, really lucky kid. <laughs> Do you know that? Yeah. So the I'm reason I say that, Heathrow, and I, I don't know if you realize it or yet, not or yet, but uh, uh, when I was 11 years old, uh, my mom bought me a drum set and put me in drum lessons. And that was amazing. And I love that. But now that I am an adult and have gotten into the handpan, I sometimes wonder how my life might have been different had I gotten to the handpan when I was your age. And wow, how amazing that would be. And, you know, it took me three years as an adult to get a handpan. And gosh, for you to know personally a handpan maker that you can actually go and see and shake his <laughs> hand and say hello. Like I, you may not realize it right now, but you are so, so lucky. So lucky. There are uh, so many people out there that are adults that probably will never even see a handpan in person. <laughs> um, and I guess I just want, I just want to tell you, um, you're so lucky, and I want to say thank you to Dave and to your mom, Cass, for you, for making this happen, dude. Because, wow, what what a privilege it is for you to have a handpan in your lap. And and I was wondering too, if you might indulge us, and you can say no because I don't want to put any pressure on you, but um, if you might be willing to even just play up and down the scale for us, or if there's like a little song that you've come up with that you could share with us. I, I would love to hear it if, on, but only if you want to, only if you want to. I can play, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Great. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Good. Hey, that is so awesome. <laughs> And, and I also want to just congratulate you, too, because at the age of 12, to come on to a live video that's broadcasted to the Internet, open to the world to see, um, and you came on here, not only just to say hello, to talk to us a little bit, to play a little music, also, that is those things are just incredible for someone at the age of 12 to do. So keep up the great work, Heathrow. I'm so happy and so excited to meet you. And it's so cool to also hear that I inspired you to get a handpan. Yep. <laughs> Thank no, you. It's a great, this, this whole interview has been really wonderful for, I think, all three of us. And, I, and I'm really just super excited that you guys were able to make the time to do this and to meet each other and to spread the love of the handpan and everything that uh, is involved with it. So... I think in just in conclusion, I just want to say thank you once again to everybody here that was on the interview panel, uh, Heathrow and Adam. And uh, thanks to everybody else there at, that's out there watching us right now. This is a live show, and I know you have all sorts of different things you could be doing, uh, but you're watching our show, and I really appreciate it. Uh, Daniel, did we have any, fi have any final uh, comments or any shout-outs? Uh, Diva is just saying, great job, Heathrow. Uh, Sasha Amy just came on, and she wanted to hear something played by Heathrow. So thank you, Heathrow, for that. Awesome. And I think that's it. I think they want to go out with Adam's song. Oh, yeah. Adam, you want to play a song and we'll fade to black while you're playing? What do you think? Sure. What, awesome. Uh, okay. What song should I play? Heathrow picks. Heathrow, do you have a song you'd like to hear? What's that? Uh, 
Not really. I like a lot. I like all of your music. You like all my music? Okay. Yeah. Um, let me let me think here what I can play. Uh, let's see. Let me do this one. And all right. All right. So I got the fun song I'm gonna end with. So this song here, uh, I was playing music in a forest and uh, there was this grandma and two grandkids walking down the trail towards me. Uh, they heard my music before they saw me. I know this because one of the grandkids said to the grandma, Grandma, where is that forest fairy music coming from? And I raised up my hand and I hollered out and I said, it's me. I'm the forest fairy. Ah. <laughs> there you go. This song is called Forest Fair. I hope you like it. Have a great afternoon. Have a great evening. Be wonderful. Bye. We love you guys. Thanks so much again for being here.